on behalf of Canon, we're very happy to have with us both Canon and tonight, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Jem Schofield. How you guys doing? Good. So a lot of people shooting. That's uh, good for me, and that makes me excited. And as uh, Dan has said, my history goes back in post training for for a long time, and I spent a lot of time up here in Boston uh, teaching for Apple. But I'm happy to be here tonight uh, on behalf of Canon. But before I talk a little bit about the 1DX, the new camera that was announced recently, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about sort of how I got to where I am right now and maybe just sort of have a brief discussion about some of the things you can think about as it relates to working with your clients or getting potential business. And the things that have happened to me since I started uh, the C47 and started to do production-based training and that kind of stuff. So cool? All right, so um, I started a company about uh, 16 years ago called Buttons Productions, and it is a production company. And I basically define myself as a producer and an educator. Those are the two lives that I lead. And you know, um, as a company, the stuff that we do is uh, motion graphics work. So we do a lot of stuff. When I started out in the mid-90s, I was uh, such a 90s word, a multimedia company. So I was doing website development and some other stuff. But that quickly led to starting to do video production work. And this is just sort of some of the stuff that um, I've worked on over the last few years. Tonight I just wanted to show you guys work that was shot uh, specifically, except for the motion graphic stuff, on Canon uh, DSLR cameras. So all of this stuff was shot primarily on the 5D Mark II. Some of it was shot on the, the 7D. And it just sort of gives you an idea. That's because it's conformed from 30 to 24. But um, some narrative stuff. So a lot of what I do is documentary style, but I also do some narrative projects and uh, just sort of a real mix of different things using these camera systems. And to give you guys an idea of my history, uh, from a production standpoint, I started about 11 years ago as a producer, and I hired crews, and they would do things like come into a space and light the entire space without light meters, without uh, scopes, without anything, and then they would set up the camera, and then they would spend two hours fixing all of the lights that they had set up. And, uh, and I realized at that point that if I wanted to be a good producer, then I would have to learn something about production. And so that was sort of the beginning of my, my education in learning about this. And uh, at the same time, I had sort of this parallel life where I was teaching post-production, uh, largely for Apple in uh, Final Cut Studio. Motion uh, specifically, some of the other apps, and also Aperture. So I had some history in photography and started to do more production work with, uh, with small chip cameras that started to shoot, uh, obviously, 24, one ingredient to the film look. And then quickly transitioned into using small chip cameras, but with 35 millimeter lens adapters to get selective focus. And then, of course, the 5D Mark II came out and things changed. And, uh, and while the first big project that I shot on that camera was at 30p, and not 29.97, but 30p, if you guys remember, um, it had all the other ingredients that we were looking for in a cost-effective camera system. You know, large sensor, interchangeable lens system, the ability to have selective focus, and a camera that worked like a cinema film camera. So the same language. You know, a lot of cinematographers come from photography as a background. And I am not Rodney Charters, but uh, I'd love to work with him at some point, producing a project. But, um, but that sort of led me down this path. So I've sort of been producing and doing production work. And then uh, one day, I started looking around. And I realized that for all of us, there was a lot of post-production training that existed. But there was very, very little production-based training. So just out of show of hands, wow, that's blinding. Um, how many people inside of this room, by a show of hands, have had some kind of real production-based training? How many people went to film school? OK, so this is pretty typical. There's very few hands, but there's a lot of working professionals in this room who do a lot of creative work um, for a living. And that is what the C47 is all about. The C47 is about 
teaching the craft of video production and filmmaking. So that's my second life is in education. And I started this because I realized there wasn't a lot of teaching out there for this area. So uh, it seemed like a good fit. And so now the evolution of this has been that I do um, not only live workshops or live learning, but I also do a lot of production-based training for other clients like Monfrotto. Um, I did 21 instructional videos for Canon's Digital Learning Center website. Six of those were for their camcorders, like the XF series there. That's a multi-camera tutorial there. Um, another one was, that's about shutter speed, so we're teaching about shutter angle. We're showing different shutter speeds. Um, so these are all free. These are all on Canon's Digital Learning Center website, and they teach a lot of stuff. Um, again, six of them for the XF series of cameras, and 15 of them for the EOS HD cameras. Uh, double system sound, learning about audio. So these things are all about five to ten minutes long, and you guys can go to the site and hopefully pick up some stuff and, uh, and learn some things. Cool? Yes? Good. Okay, cool. Wow. Um, so part of this mess that I got into was that when I started the C47, even though it's much more than just um, this, which is the website, I had the psychotic idea of doing five video podcasts every week, so one a day. And I've been doing it for almost two and a half years now. And, uh, and this one is kind of fun. That's a, uh, that's a Canon DSLR. And it is sitting, uh, the sensor plane is right above a small chip camera with a 35 millimeter lens adapter. They both have 50 millimeter lenses on them. And it is, uh, I'm geeking out and trying to figure out what the field of view is between the two of them. That's pretty geeky, I think. Um, this one was shot today. So that was shot over there. So that's live already online. You can see that's not much different. Um, and so, so I do do this, but the real idea here is not, it's not about DSLR filmmaking. It's about the craft of video production and filmmaking. And that's what I want to focus on. And not just me, but as you saw from those clips on, uh, you know, on there, having other voices there, bringing in DPs, bringing in sound recorders, bringing in people who are experts in the industry, ACs, DITs, people who are doing things on set for episodic television, for feature films, and that's sort of phase two to just give you guys a teaser for the C47 as far as what I'm going to be doing. So there's going to be more long form training coming up next year, and that's all kind of coming together. Um, additionally, I run a program every summer called the Filmmakers Intensive. I co-produce it with Josh Apter from Manhattan Edit Workshop. It's a two-week narrative filmmaking program. So it focuses strictly on narrative filmmaking. And it's for all of those people in this room who didn't raise their hand when I asked them about training. It's about people who want to raise their game, people who want to have, usually we have eight to 10 instructors from all phases of production and post. And, uh, and it's an immersive nine hours of instruction every day. Uh, you live basically together. Uh, not in the same room, but you live together. And kind of hang out and you make films and really learn about the hierarchy of filmmaking. And uh, that's one that we actually originally ran in Florida. And the next one, next summer, is going to be in New York. So it'll just be outside New York City and should be pretty exciting. Cool? So um, now we talk a little bit about this. It's so mysterious, that image. Um, this is the 1DX, and you can call it X, unlike Final Cut Pro, which is 10. 10. You can't call it X, it's 10. Uh, so this is the EOS 1DX, and one thing I want to tell you guys, first of all, is that this is uh, Canon's flagship still camera. Okay, so we still have a very similar situation to what we saw with the 5D Mark II and the other DSLRs that are out there on the market. This is a flagship stills camera. But it is definitely a version two with the stuff that I'm going to talk to you about tonight, which is obviously the movie or video functions of the camera. So we're not going to get into the you know, 12 frames per second, 14 frames per second in still mode, crazy, uh, insane, uh, crazy eddy high ISOs. Anybody from New York got that, hopefully. Um, X for extreme. X also because it's the 10th camera in this line for Canon. 
And uh, there's probably another 10 in there as well. I don't know what it is, but I think I saw it somewhere on the slide deck. I'm like the anti-keynote person, by the way. This is very strange for me going through slides. Um, yeah, hands-on training is what I like. So, okay, so here we go. Um, it's a monster, guys. And this, remember, this is, this is number one <clears throat> of phase two. So this may or may not be the right camera system for you guys. Um, shipping in March of next year, it's about $6,800. And it is a full frame um, DSLR camera, 18 megapixel, monster of uh, insanity. And if you are still a photographer who is also going to be doing a lot of stuff in sports, and you need um, you know, incredible AF autofocus capabilities and tracking, then, uh, and you need to do video, then maybe it's a camera for you. But it is one camera system, and we'll talk about some of the features. Now, one of the things I really like about this is they've designed this camera to basically have a playback functionality on the left side, and you'll see on the right side, we're really talking about how we operate the camera. Make sense? So that's you know, split down there. You guys remember the original iPod? Anybody have one? Show of hands, come on. I did, five gig, yeah? Okay, cool. So that little dial there on the top right, that's like the, uh, you can just move around, right? So the iPod Classic. Um, so you, it's basically a silent movie control. So you're not hearing clicking, you're not picking up sounds when you're using that. And you can control the following things during shooting, as if I need to read it to you. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO speed, exposure compensation. You're not going to use that. And sound recording level. So very cool stuff. And uh, really, really a nice addition. Hopefully that will make it into other camera systems in the future. Um, audio recording, I'm going to say this from an experience standpoint. We're still rarely going to use these cameras for production-based audio. Okay, So we're still going to probably do double system sound. But in those situations where you might be doing a little video podcast with a Rode VideoMic Pro or something like that, um, it might be nice to have some meters, I'm just saying, up on the screen so you have them. Um, you can actually change those levels as you're recording. So you do have a way to actually visually monitor your audio levels with the camera. So that's definitely a nice addition. Okay, Dual CF cards could be nice. I think for me the biggest feature here is redundancy, built-in backup. The ability to have that data copied over to the other card. Um, I haven't seen a working model yet. You guys might know of a show called Photo Plus Expo down in New York, started today. Uh, I think there's eight of these cameras, maybe 10 in existence. 20. 20. And how many of them are in New York, Dan? 20. 20. <laughs> so I get slideshows. but. Um, we, we get increased storage capacity, obviously, um, so it's a really nice feature to have that dual card slot. And they've figured out a way to get around the EU, so that four gigabyte file size limit is gone. We now can, on a DSLR, Canon DSLR, record uh, just under 30 minutes. If you guys are pressing start and going for more than 30 minutes, it's definitely not the right camera system for you. But a half an hour of recording is a lot of recording time. Um, this stuff on the left hand side where we talk about all I and IPB record time, um, that's something we're going to talk about right now. But you'll see there's a menu up here where you can go in and choose your resolution, your frame rate, and you can choose what type of compression the camera is using. So it's a big step, even with the IPB, uh, that is also an evolution on the uh, long gop recording structure that is used in the current line of Canon DSLRs. Um, if that was Charlie Brown, don't worry. It just means it's better as far as that. Uh, two compression formats can be selected. So this is um, a big deal for editors. If we're, we're not getting, I know there's a little sad face here, we're not getting a live uh, clean HDMI out of this camera. I'm telling you right now, so don't get your hopes up. But what we are getting is we're getting two compression choices. So if we are recording to those CF cards and we want to edit this stuff, it's much, much easier to edit stuff that has full frames of video. Every single frame is a full frame of video. It's the reason we transcode from H.264 or from MPEG-2 to something like ProRes. 
because we want to get every frame into basically a full frame of video. So this camera is going to have an option where you can actually record intra frames. Okay, it's still using H.264, but has anybody ever used a convergent design box before? You know, there's, it's part of the spec, so you can do iframe. Um, so it's going to be larger files, but should be easier for editing. And then we have uh, an evolved version of the compression that we see right now inside of the current DSLRs, which is an IPB uh, intraframe. So we've got basically predictive frames, bidirectional frames, and we usually have one of those iframes, full frame of video, usually every 12 or 15 frames. You guys know about that stuff, I think. We've been messing with it for a long time now. Um, so that's pretty cool. Time code, big deal. Free run, record run, so we can set it up to time of day if we want. We can go ahead and start, stop, time code. Look, hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Ooh, ah, let me hear an ooh. Let me hear an ah. There you go, okay, good. And this is the cool part. This is the real OO. We have an Ethernet port. And we can transfer when you're done recording your files. But we can also look. Time sync between cameras. Oh. Wow. That's, yeah, I'd say. That's pretty cool. Higher sensitivity to be expected. I mean, we don't come out with new DSLRs and have lower sensitivity. So I think we're, but in video mode, we're going to be able to go to higher ISOs. And some of this stuff is pretty amazing that I've seen coming out of the camera. Um, and this is a big one. Um, I've seen, uh, as far as just little video shots, improved rolling shutter. Um, they've really engineered the stills part of this camera so that byproducts in the video uh, part of it are really getting picked up. So that moray stuff uh, going away largely, color artifacts, <coughs> the way it's reading from that 18 megapixel sensor is different than it does in the current line of Canon DSLRs. So we should see um, a, a vast improvement or elimination of a lot of the problems that we're seeing with the current crop, first generation DSLRs of video. Remember, not designed originally for us, designed for Reuters and the Associated Press. 30 actual frames of video per second. Obviously all your EF lenses, right? Um, again, another mysterious photograph. And then I'm just saying, I don't know, it's Thursday, October 27th right now. Next week is November 3rd. Maybe something's going to happen. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jim Schofield, thank you very much.